the 16th of January 1991, the multinational forces of the Gulf Coalition unleashed a massive night air assault on Iraqi forces in both Iraq and Kuwait. The attacks caught the Iraqis by surprise. And Allied aircraft soon roamed at will in the skies over Iraq. This video ordnance program examines the first month of the Desert Storm air campaign, from the air raids over Baghdad to the Scud missile attacks on Saudi Arabia and Israel. Operation Desert Storm began with air attacks on a scale not seen since the Second World War. Preceding the aircraft were Tomahawk cruise missiles launched from U.S. Navy warships. Over 100 were launched in the first wave against heavily defended targets such as air defense headquarters, key radar facilities, and major communication centers. We've had a very busy evening. Uh, as a matter of fact, it, uh, it's not over yet. Uh, this is the opening round of the war. Uh, the Tomahawk strikes will continue for another uh, at least 36 hours in conjunction with the air strikes that are taking place over Iraq right now. Uh, I can report to you that uh, the air, right, air strikes have started. Uh, the Tomahawks have already started to impact in the Baghdad area, and there are engagements, uh, fighter engagements ha happening over land at this point. Uh, we are following the course of all that as we are remaining vigilant as we steam to our next uh, Tomahawk launch, launch point. Operation Desert Storm was the first time the Tomahawk cruise missile was used in combat. cruise missile is a thousand pound warhead on an unmanned aircraft shot from just about all the various surface ships and submarines that the Navy's got and it's done exceptionally well in the first week. We, I think that they were said there was pr approximately 500 cruise missiles in the theater on 56 ships and so far I think they would have shot about a third of those within in the first week. About 150 have uh, managed to go off. The Tomahawk uh, is, a, is a terrific weapon for this kind of warfare, particularly this kind of warfare. It's a significant development to the Navy. It, it may not sound that original, but it is a significant development to the Navy. In previous years, the Navy had, in a tactical sense, one, perhaps two ways of striking at an enemy. One is the carrier-based attack systems, A6, A7 in those days, FA-18 now. And we had big guns, 16-inch guns off the battleship, which proved effective in Vietnam, but against a more capable or more distant enemy were useless. Therefore, the Navy was then had but a single attack, uh, method of attacking, taking the fight to the enemy. The surface forces and the submarines never played in, a, in the conventional sense. They, all they were there was to defend the carrier, and that was not to the liking of many of the naval officers. The Tomahawk system, particularly Tomahawk with its long range, gives the Navy ships and, and submarines a chance to participate and take the fight to the enemy. It was important in this war that Tomahawk worked, and the initial indications are that it's worked exceptionally well. During the initial stage of the flight, the Tomahawk uses radar terrain comparison guidance, codenamed TERCOM. In the final phase of the attack, 
the computer switches on its digital scene mapping system, which compares a digital photo of the target, stowed in its memory, with the actual scene below. This provides pinpoint precision. Modern air campaigns take place in successive phases with clear objectives in each phase. One of the first aims of the operation was the suppression of Iraqi air defenses. This means the elimination of anti-aircraft missile and gun sites, the radars that direct them, and the command and control centers that coordinate them. An air defense network is like a web running from a central headquarters to local stations then to the radar posts which detect the aircraft and guide the missiles, and finally to the missiles and guns themselves. The air defense suppression campaign begins with the destruction of the command centers, which coordinate the network. The operation then continues down the line, eliminating radar sites and eventually the missiles themselves. The first wave of the night attack was spearheaded by the F-117 Black Jet since it is virtually invisible to Iraqi radars. The noted aviation author and pilot, Jeff Ethel, explains the role of stealth in Desert Storm. So what it is, is a, a very highly developed pinpoint strike airplane. It is never going to be a mass bomber. In other words, you can't hang enough on it to make it drop 20 bombs. But it will drop one or two in a very tiny spot. And therefore, it will probably only be used to hit a pinpoint target, something that's very badly needed, maybe like a control bunker. There was one very classic shot where an F-117 during the war last week dropped a bomb through an air shaft hole, and the debris came out the front door. That is exactly what the 117 does well. It's another air defense sector over in the western part of Iraq. It's already been struck by a 117. This is a team effort. The second aircraft comes through. And this part of the building here provides some constructural weakness that will be exploited in this attack and the bomb will hit in uh, this area here. And this is my counterpart's headquarters in uh, Baghdad. This is the air, uh, headquarters of the Air Force, and keep your eye on all sides of the building as the airplane overflies the building and drops the bomb down through the center of the building. On the heels of the F-117s were the Air Force's F-4G Wild Weasels, which attacked critical Iraqi radar sites with harm anti-radar missiles. The Wild Weasels have one of the most dangerous assignments of the strike force. Its job is basically to soak up the air defense. It goes in first and goes out last. And the, the Wild Weasel missions on this war are four hours plus. Now, that's a long time for a fighter. Normally it's an hour, hour and a half that most guys are flying. So he goes in, he sees when the radar comes up, he goes down there with a, uh, an anti-radiation missile that homes on radar, and he gets those guys to fire at him, uh, or at least to keep the radar on, so he can in turn destroy the, the, the radar guided AAA, the radar guided SAMs, uh, radar sites, and the air defense radar sites, uh, whatever it is that's going to be a threat to the strike force coming behind him. The wild weasels were remarkably successful in their mission, suffering no losses in the first wave of the attack. We were, we were shooting the SAMs who were trying to shoot at the guys who were doing what they were doing downtown. The SAM missile sites in town? Around the perimeter of the Around town. the perimeter of Baghdad? That's correct. And tell me again about the resistance that you ran into? Lots of, lots of ground fire, lots of AAA, that Sandy aircraft artillery. Uh, and like I say, I think there was one SAM fired that I saw, but uh, it was so far away and up through the smoke and haze, it was hard to make it out. So nothing came close to you? No, but that's the beauty of the system. We can stay far enough away that that's not going to be a problem for us, from the SAMs anyway. <laughs> 